So a big staple of what I do is actually a pretty simple sound. I'll play it here. Um, yeah, this sound is really, really simple, and everyone has, I feel like everyone has their own variation of it, but it's, it's just like, I, I used to call it an organ, but I guess it's not really an organ. It's just the cleanest type of saw sound you can imagine, and, uh, I mean, I can't tell you exactly how to make yours, because everyone can do it their own way, but, uh, I recommend messing around with a sound like this. Um, one little tip I like to do is to duplicate it and to offset the milliseconds a little bit. I don't know, you can do it, I'm sure, in FL and all these other programs. And set one to the left, hard left, hard right, just to widen it out a little bit. Um, and then I also have something doing something similar, but in silence. Yeah, so with this, it's the same thing as what I was saying before. Simple, simpler is better, for sure. Yeah, a lot of my work is really melodic, so I knew from the beginning that I had to have um, a sound that I could play really complex chords and they would still come through. I feel like with a lot of synths, if you were to play complex chords, um, it kind of clashes, so yeah. Um, there's that. Let's see. One thing I've actually been using recently is Razor. Anyone have Razor or? Yeah, it's awesome, right? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I don't know if I could find, yeah. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. Okay, maybe not. So with this type of thing, this is something that I've committed to audio, but um, one thing I recommend trying with, with Razor is Set this filter, if for those of you that have it, set this to vocoder and try sending audio through this. It's actually really cool. Um, some of these sounds I would have never thought to make without that. So like this. That's me talking into a mic and just saying, just making weird noises and throwing it through Razor and you can get the weirdest things. Um, let's see what this is. S same thing with this. Like, I would, I, there's no way I would have ever made that in Massive or in Silent or anything, but it's, you can get some odd combos. So yeah, I, I, um, that's something I've been doing recently. Just try messing around with vocoders, um, especially Razor. And another thing is, if you don't want to sit there and just make noises, put like, why isn't this going? Yeah. Put like an acapella through there, you know, whatever. Um, it just, I just find it gives you combos that you wouldn't normally think of. By the way, that first sound right there, that's also Razor. Um, Razor is really cool. Like, hold on, let's see. Okay, so what I'm doing here, let's, let's break this down. Um, I'll, okay. So... Let's take these envelopes off. Okay, so I'm not great at bass synthesis. I'm gonna be honest, it's not my forte, but um, I feel like the more I work on it, the the more I realize how much envelopes play into it. And I don't think that I had really utilized it enough. So listen to this. Um, let's take off clipper and string. Okay, so this is basically just a saw, saw note here. It's kind of cool, it shows you the visual there. Um, look how crazy it is. You add on a string, which is, they, they have like stretcher, beat tune, beating, stiff string. That kind of gives it that string, like guitar almost type sound. Um, clipper. And 
this is just amazing to me how much you can change it using like something like a notch filter here and applying the same envelope across all three. So it started out really simple. We just had a saw, turned on the string, and look at this. Yeah, so um, once again, Razor's awesome. So there's that. So what I started doing about uh, a few months ago has completely changed the way I work. Uh, you'll see everything says sends only right here. Um, usually it's set to master, but I have everything on sends only. And if you go to the send, this is specifically for, bas basically for just for this compressor. And you'll see I have a really high ratio setting, short attack, short release, and really low threshold. And that's for everything. So if you play this, and that's side chain to um, the click of my kick. So the reason I like doing that is twofold. One, because it really helps with CPU. Like, I don't know if you guys have this issue, but before, when you have so many compressors running on each track, it's just going to hurt your CPU so much. Uh, so that helps because you're only running one compressor. And also, I find that you get a way tighter sound when you're compressing everything the same way. So um, I, I would definitely recommend messing with that. And it's nice because if you, you know, if you say, man, I wish my threshold was lower or man, I wish that release was a little longer, it takes one second. You just, that's it. And it does it for the whole song instead of having to go, ah, okay, go through this track, this track, this track. It's really annoying. So there's not many cases to me when I want one track to have a different side chain than a different track. If so, you can do it, put it on that track and don't set it to sense only. But maybe for the vocals or something like that. For, for the most part, my basses, all my synths, all that stuff, just run it through uh, the send. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, any questions about any of that? Do you guys do that? Anyone? Yeah, cool. I just, I just recently realized that. It's, it's really nice. It's like revelation, like, why haven't I been doing this this whole time? I, I felt the same way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just it changes everything for me. It, it makes everything hit so much harder and you don't realize. Even if, you know, you don't realize it, when you, when you have different compressors on different tracks, you'll have, like, one release at 27 and the other at, like, 32, and you're like, whatever, it's not a big difference. But it is. It adds up. It's additive. So, um, there's that. very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramide I, I've discovered electronic music and you know San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.